Hi there beautiful people, welcome back to another video and welcome to my channel if you're new. Hi, my name is Femke and for today I am going to do a super long awaited video on how to fix a broken nail using the teabag method, a little bit of like nail glue and gel polishes. Just for the record, you don't have to use the glue, you don't have to use the gel polishes, but I will just show you this way. You can use regular base coats and top coats as well, just regular polish that you don't have to cure. So I use a whole plethora of different files. Of course, this is not a must. It is just what you personally prefer. I have a couple of different ones. Um, the two I'm showing right here, I don't even use those a lot. Uh, lastly, a little buffing block. This is just a really soft one because these are my natural nails. So you want to take it easy on those. I need some lint-free wipes and a little bit of rubbing alcohol. I just use the 96%. You can use 70% as well. And I'm pretty much just using the alcohol to get rid of any dust and just to make sure that my nails are completely free of oils and so on. Then, of course, you need a piece of a tea bag. I'm using some very sharp scissors for that and some tweezers. And I'm going to use the Essence Fix It nail glue. I'm not quite sure if these are still available, but I just purchased like six of them a couple of years ago and it lasts forever. Then I'm going to use a couple of different um, gel polishes as well as an acid-free primer, but it's totally up to you if you want to use that. For the base, you can actually choose whatever base you prefer when it comes to gel polishes as well as a regular nail polish, but I would recommend to definitely not use a peel-off one because it will definitely like lessen the strength of the entire fix. Here you can see this break has been grown out for a couple of months already, but it actually was a little bit like into the fleshy part on the smile line when it happened three months ago. So that's just a little extra information, but I totally forgot to just record this while I actually had the tear into the nail bed area. So yeah, that's why I'm just recording it right now. But first of all, I'm using my 100, 100 grid file to get rid of the old gel polish or at least the top coat layer. You want to make sure to really get rid of that. I am not going to soak off any of the old gel polish, but just filing off mostly. Of course, making sure to not really touch the natural nail plate with such a rough file as the 100, 100 is. Um, it's just kind of like to get rid of the bulk of the old gel polish, as you can see right here. Of course, don't worry if you accidentally touch your natural nail plate, just make sure to be really gentle with that because you really don't want to overfile your natural nails. That hurts. It's just really bad. It can cause infections and so on. So always be really, really gentle when it comes to your natural nails, your natural nail plate and so on. You really don't want to overfile it. Also for structure and strength of the natural nail, you want to keep that just fully intact. One thing that I also like to do with the rougher grid file, the 100-100, is just to shape the nail a little bit, but for more definition and more precise work and also a little less of like harshness onto the nail, I'm going in with my 150 grid file. This one I use on my natural nails all the time, of course being quite soft, but you do have to scratch up the natural nail plate just a little bit for the gel polish and stuff like that to actually adhere. Of course, you don't have to do this if you are using regular nail polishes. You can just make sure that all like old nail polish is completely removed with some nail polish remover. Of course, you can choose to use an acetone one, but I prefer to use an acetone free one because acetone is very drying to the nails and the skin. Um, so yeah, just make sure that when you are using regular nail polishes, the nails are completely dust and oil free and you can just go in with um, additional shaping of the nail. Of course, being gentle, especially if you have just broken or torn your nail, it can be quite like delicate, painful and so on. So always be careful with that. But because this break happened like three months ago during work, 
I can be a little bit more rough since it is in the free edge part already and of course you don't have any feeling in that part. After removing all of the bulk of the gel polish and shaping the nail I just use a little buffing block to really like smoothen it a little bit more and now I'm going in with my rubbing alcohol and a lint free wipe to get rid of all of the oil and mostly dust because Removing gel polishes with files, even if it's like an e-file or manually, like I just did, it just causes a lot of dust. So you definitely want to use a face mask as well. And uh, maybe even in combination with one of those nail dust collectors. But after removing all of the dust, you want to push back the cuticle. You can do this before removing the dust, but I personally don't have a lot of new cuticle growth. I'm very blessed with that. I never have to cut them or anything like that. But after that, I'm just going in with the Acid Free Primer. This one is by Pink Jellock, which is my favorite gel polish brand. It is so good. You don't have to necessarily use the primer. Um, you usually like rubbing alcohol is good enough to really dehydrate it and make sure there's no dust and oil but i just really like to use this prep booster it just works really really nicely then you want to take a little piece of a tea bag and just cut like off whatever you need i tend to cut off a little bigger than i have to use or that is necessary so you can always just measure it up just keep it close to the nail or the break wherever that is in the nail and just measure up if it is big enough. Um, as I mentioned, I tend to cut it up a little bigger so I can actually trim it down if necessary. You don't have to do this, especially if the break is on the free edge of the nail. You can actually really wrap it around the nail like underneath the nail as well, which will give it a lot of extra strength. But if you're not into that, you don't have to do so. It's just a little extra tip that I want to give you guys, especially if you have a tear in longer nails like I do and it's on the free edge already. Then I'm going to use a little bit of the nail glue and just place just the tiniest amount all over the tear itself. You can do this method as well if the break is in the nail bed area, like the fleshy part. And even if it is a little bloody, just make sure that the blood is completely dry or removed with rubbing alcohol or any other like disinfection stuff you like to use and make sure that the nail is completely dry before doing so because you don't want to pour any glue into an open wound. Um, that makes a lot of sense to me but I have seen people doing this like one minute after a break and I can only imagine how painful that will be. After that you want to take your little piece of your tea bag and just place it quickly on top of the glue and of course on top of the tear in the nail and just press it down gently with tweezers. I always use tweezers for that because it's just really handy. And of course you can just wrap it around if needed. Since I am using gel polishes for this particular fix and I do a gel polish overlay on my natural nails anyway, you are going to need an LED or UV light. I'm just using the small LED light by Pink Jellac. Once again, it's my favorite brand. I love them so much. And you want to go in with your base. So you can use any brand base or any brand of gel polish that you personally prefer and just go over the entire nail. One thing that I love to do is to cap off the edges as well as the um, like edges on the sides of the nail. Um, that especially gives a lot of strength to the patch for this nail break. So if you only wanna do so on the side where you have the break, that is totally cool as well, but I prefer doing so. And I'm actually going to apply two coats of um, base. So of course you want to cure in between for the recommended amount of time. Usually it's like 30 seconds or a full minute. Um, and make sure to remove any excess if you have some like spilling onto the skin. And just run over your brush a couple of times more. If you have any bubbles like appearing or anything like that, you can easily brush those out before curing. Because if you cure with any bubbles onto your nails, you won't have a super flush, smooth end result. So make sure there aren't any bubbles. After curing your two layers of base coat, you want to go in with your top. I'm just using the Shine one by Pink Jellock. These are actually all vegan. Like their newer collection polishes are all vegan. They're, I think, pretty much plant-based. 
um, and they are very easy to use and soak off as well if you're not into um, filing it off like I usually do. Um, uh, the shine top coat pretty much is a really nice basic top coat. Um, it does have a sticky layer afterwards so you really want to make sure to get rid of that excess like non-cured gel with a lint-free wipe and some rubbing alcohol or even a gel um, cleanser or anything like that you can definitely use that safely onto your nails especially if it is a gel cleanser that is actually made by the same brand as the gel polishes you're using so always keep an eye out for that usually a lot of brands have their own cleansers or cleaners too and they are actually quite nice to use especially the pink gelac one but since i tend to use a lot of 96 percent like rubbing alcohol it's just really handy I have like that little like spritz bottle super easy to use as well of course make sure to clean underneath the nail too if you have applied any gel there like I did on the sides on the edges as well as the um, free edge of the tip but yeah that was pretty much it so far if you do need to shape up your nail a little bit i tend to use my very very thin file this is a 180 to 40 grit so it's very very soft for the natural nails and it's actually perfect to get rid of any imperfections if you have like a little bit of a lumpy side or anything like that or even a little bit of spillage onto the skin which i don't recommend but sometimes it just just happens it just kind of like loops over um, you can just easily file that off after curing if you have not removed it before with your nail or even a brush and a little bit of cleanser or alcohol so yeah after that make sure to remove any excess dust any excess anything <laughs> that's on the nail with your lint-free wipe and some cleanser or rubbing alcohol and your nail is fully fixed and you have already did your new infill of your gel polish overlay as well i will be sharing a video on how to do that too it's quite similar to this but i have already recorded it and i will be showing that on one of my other fingernails which doesn't have a tear in it so if you want to know how to do a gel polish overlay slash infill on natural nails keep an eye out for that but thank you guys so much for watching i love you so much and i hope to see you next time